Well, we've just arrived at K1. About, um, what's time? Six, half six. Pulled in the car park. Um, <laughs> and the very first swim, I've seen three fish already. It's just started raining, and the forecast is for rain basically all day. So, I'm going to get the old silly spoon thing out. Ship one out, They're right close in. Well, ship a couple out and just drop it on their heads and see what all this is about. Everyone says you can get quick bites with them. <clears> the <throat> problem is I'm not really sure, I think it's quite weedy, but I'm going to give it a go. PVA bag clips on the end, drop it right on their heads. Who knows? Might be the one. Here we go. One rod, one minute, one fish. Hey, he's only a little one. They're only little ones, I saw jumping. Hey, hey. Good fun. It's carp fishing, sort of. Not sure about the spoon thing, but it certainly works. Obviously works. Here's the proof. Got to find where the biggest of it is now. Come all this way to these, but at the same time, <laughs> absolutely better than not catching. Thank you, Scarf. Pop you back. Try and find your granddad. Well, Madeleine is back out this week. I cannot get her to see it under this. She's just like, no dad, I'm gonna land the rain. You get absolutely soaking wet. And when you put your bed up, I'm getting on that. No more bites yet. Now I've got two rods out. And a brolly up and a low chair. But I've looked at the weather and I think I'm pretty much stuck in here to be honest. It's gonna rain all day. So I can either walk round and round, choose somewhere else and get drenched. Or I can just fish practically out of the motor. It just seems something wrong in my mind with that. Driving, open the door, go in the first swim. Yes, I've caught a fish. That is a bonus. Um, albeit a very small one. But by all accounts, the big ones do get in this little bay. It used to be a regular haunt, apparently, for Scar, the biggest one in the lake. It would be easy, wouldn't it? When I'm here, I've got a house up. I could just put my bed in here, cook the breakfast, and that'd be me. Do something with that stupid bloody dog. So, no. you knew it wouldn't take long. We've moved, obviously. Because that's what we do. We move. <laughs> I haven't been here very long, really. I suppose we have. I suppose it's mid-afternoon now. 
loaded it all up and we've come round to a swim called the Gravelly. Well, it should be called the Swampy. It's always got a puddle in the middle of it. But I had a little walk round earlier because I was bored. And I saw quite a lot of fish out here. Like 20? But dotted. In sort of the over the other side. I nearly I went around there and had a look. Some a little bit further up. A couple around there. <coughs> but the, the, the most of them were here, just sort of behind them ducks. And the two swims to my left are all completely overgrown, obviously don't get fish much, and the one to my right hardly gets fished either. So this one actually commands quite a lot of water. It's from, see four swims in a row and there's only this one gets fished. Now we're carp fishing. Got a proper flame on. Rods are out. Spodding's done. Just hope there's some <laughs> some fish left in me swim. <laughs> oh well, <clears throat> you got to get food in there, ain't you? You got to actually fish for them. Sometimes that just causes a bit of disturbance, but hey ho, of course that is on fire, isn't it? What do you reckon, Madalena? Bit hot yet? What are you waiting for, Madalena? Hmm? Could it be, perhaps, that? Is that why you're in such close attendance? It's looking prime over there. Look at that. Chicken kebab, four lamb chops. Now the flames have died down. <laughs> Took a while. Certainly smelling good. It's looking good out there as well. I have seen a few. Yeah, there's been a... They stopped showing, obviously, when I was doing my baiting and rigging and what have you. Um, but I've seen two or three since. My last, the final cast, there's, there's like a tiny bit of gravel on my left hand rod that I was trying to hit and it kept just not hitting the back marker. That's towards a you know, certain sort of point on the tree. And the last one just went bang smack on. And as it was going down, <clears throat> it's about 14 foot deep out there. Got halfway down and went donk, donk, and then carried on sinking. I thought, I've just hit a carp on the way down. <laughs> So I think that's why they've been showing a bit. I think they're fairly high in the water at the moment. But hopefully they're going to drop down later. And snaffle all that grub I've given them. Thought about putting a zig out for a few hours, but it's getting late and <coughs> it is barbecue time. Which is far more important. Ay, 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 ay. Don't know why it all surprises me how hot it is. It's a barbecue. It's going to be hot, isn't it? I need some tongs, really, rather than these fingers. Give it a last little bit of cremation. Bit of grass, I don't want that. <laughs> don't start clawing me. No, off. Does any part of this actually look like dog food? Hmm? God, you can stare. Don't just swallow it. One and all. Very special.
about five o'clock, I think, something like that. Had my early morning wake up call about half past four by some form of jumbo jet right over my head. Now, I have had a bit of a disaster. Well, I've had quite a lot of a disaster. Yesterday evening, just mm, duskish, still sea, but you know, getting that way. I had a. I was on the phone to F. I was just about to go to bed. Thought getting an early night. I was on the phone to F, and the right hand rod ripped, and I hooked into a fish, and it absolutely just mullered me. It's stripped, oh I don't know, I couldn't tell you how much, but it just, the clutch was just screaming. It went right off, maybe 25, 30 yards of line. Got it back, turned, away it went again, up, in, out, up, down, everywhere. Proper powerful fish. Oh, this is a good one. Eventually managed to get him in closer, close enough to see him, even ship the net out ready. Came up, rolled a couple of times, and it was common. It was, had to have been mid-30. And he decided suddenly he hadn't had enough. And he shot out again and then kited hard round to the right, right into my own margins and shot off up the margins. And Well, long story short, I ended up losing the bloody thing. I so I'd seen it twice and it was a good fish. Best fish I've hooked this year. The power was unbelievable. Now they spawn, they get a bit like that, they get they do fight hard, but this one was just mental. Not happy. Not happy at all. There's nothing I can do about it, it's just, you know, shit happens, doesn't it? But it don't make it any easier to bear. I just turned my phone off, jumped into bed, buried my head under the things, big sulk on. Went to sleep. But anyway, today's a new day. I haven't seen any yet. I would have liked to have seen them by now. Oh, I just hope they're still here after moving from one end of the lake to the other, getting on fish, finding me spots, having a bite, and losing it. I'm going to start talking about losing it again, and I'm probably going to mention that a few times. Bugger, 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 bugger. So now I need an even bigger one on the bank to make up for it. Hmm. I did have a few liners afterwards, actually got up again and took the bobbins off for most of the night. cut down on the sort of lineage put them back on this morning see what today brings well I've just stood in that swim next door I've seen three fish a little bit further up the lake all in one swim so guess what <laughs> I'm gonna move got me down I haven't seen anything out here <clears throat> there was rakes of them yesterday but They've moved, so so shall we. Let's go. So here we are. We arrive. Got the stagnant little pond behind. If any of you was watching last winter's blogs. Was it last winter? Can't remember now, might be the winter before. You might recognise that. This was my favourite winter swim. Where I had the posh Sutton and all the other fish in February. But it's closed because of a big tree that's fallen in the water over there part of a pair that's called the right hand point and where we're going today which is a little rickety bridge it's called the left hand point 
nice little secluded swim. Just screw the rods into the jetty. Looks sexy, don't they? Look at that. Nice. And the fish I've seen been practically straight out in front here. We've moved from just down in that <coughs> patch of silver ripple there, so not far. Yeah, I reckon I was casting into that patch of silver ripple before. We've moved up the lake a few swims to here. So I baited up my spots and while I was spotting each spot, a fish showed within a rod length of the spot that I was spotting at the time, if that makes sense. I was doing the longer one on the right and the fish boshed out a rod length away from that while I was spotting and when I did the close rod exactly the same happened. So they're about. So tonight we're having a barbecue classic. shopped at the delights of the local co-op. Those beef rib and brisket burgers are absolutely gorgeous. I had them at home the other day, they've got a strange um, vintage cheddar and caramelised un caramelized onion melt which you have to take off when you barbecue them and then put it back on. Um, onion, great, uh, sliced cheese, garlic and herb sauce and I'm breaking my own rules tonight, I'm going to have bread, I never eat bread, but they had those freshly baked rolls in there, we're having burgers, British burgers, I'm absolutely starving, so I'm going to crack on, give that a while to soak in, I have not got much coal left, most of this is dust, this is not ideal, but there you go, here's what it is, but a couple of nice burgers. There's no excuse for sweaty McSweaty burgers. No proper ones. Bit of flame, a little bit more jollop. Just lively it up a bit. Away she goes. rack on there so we don't have to clean it, it can just cook itself clean. Perfect. Right, all those coals are getting grey. Let's have a bit of prep. Cut proper nice big thick chunks slices red onion yeah a bit off wouldn't say this is exactly the most hygienic box in the world but hey ho it's only me eating it isn't it silver foil Silver foil's <coughs> proper handy to have in your tackle box. You cook anything in silver foil, you can turn a barbecue into an oven with a bit of silver foil. Two little squares of that. Roll. 
proper thick burgers. So I'm going to cook them up high. As in high away from the heat, not high heat. Get in there. Well, they're about half done. And I get your little oniony things. Just curl up all around the edges. Yeah, nothing can pour out. Probably best if you do this not on the barbecue because that's bloody hot. I'll do this one over here. Get them going. Just put, lift that onion up. A little bit of olive oil there, just a tiny bit. Just to, helps to sort of fry it up. Oh, it's quite a bit of olive oil on that one. But never mind. That won't hurt. sizzling up nicely now isn't it that stuff they call melt I've never found melts very well but it don't really matter but maybe if we squash it down a little bit thin it out it might melt a little bit better right that side's done so, we have to put a mature cheddar. See if we can actually melt that with a bit of a lid to keep the heat in. Right, rolls need to be cut in half because they need to be toasted. There is no excuse for raw rolls. They're absolute rubbish. But toasted rolls, different gravy. Right, let's have a look. Cheese is going. Oh, the melt's melting now. Look, just that little bit of heat on the top. Oh, that looks like one, doesn't it? That over there, out of the way. Over there, that over there, out of the way before he burns. Toasty bun. Roll, cob, bap, whatever the hell you want to call it, depending on where you're geographically located. Balm. Tea cake. There's about a million names, isn't there, for a bread roll. If you wanted to get really posh with this, you could put some salad in it. Da da! <laughs> but we don't. We'll leave that for the rabbits and the deer. I'll be honest with you. Looking at that melt gear, I don't think I'm even going to open the garlic and herb mayonnaisey stuff. There's plenty of, oh look at that, see that's a proper burger roll, that's sorted. This, ladles and jelly spoons, is going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, melted cheese, unless it falls on the floor, in which case it'll be an absolute disaster. Take off that now. Oh, look at him. Well, wind's blowing. 
get all that last bit of goodness out of there. Ooh. Now how could you not want to eat that? Proper burger. Put Byron burger to shame, wouldn't it? Probably pay about ten and a half quid for that in a posh gaff. Yum, bloody yum. Cheers, people. All the very best. Mmm. Living like kings. Come on, fish. A lot bit of colour that lens. It's got three different lenses. This is just on my phone. This. And it's got three different lenses. That one, the middle one, which always looks really cloudy, and the long one, which looks cloudy. But the close one's really clear. So what's going on there? Maybe I could try cleaning them. Hold on. Right, let's clean that one. That one. Oh. <laughs> and that one. Oh, it's amazing what a wipe with your t-shirt does, isn't it? <laughs> That's a lot better, isn't it? I should have realised that a couple of weeks ago. Oh, what was that? Oh. There's one. Oh, wrong way. Again, not where I'm fishing, but I could be. Two or three show in any one area, then I'm willing to move the right hand rod. But I'm moving the left because I've seen them bang on the left hand rod. <coughs> right, so that was towards that spindly little tree in the distance. Well, I'm not sure what's going on this evening. There'd been, well I'd lost one by now yesterday evening and there'd been f at least three or four bites around the lake. I can only think that maybe it's because it's a lot brighter. It was almost, well not almost dark, but proper gloomy at this time last night. But it's quite bright and sunny this evening so maybe <clears throat> if there is a bite to be had it'll be a bit later. Hopefully they will turn up, they will have dropped down, I'm sure, sure they're here. <clears throat> Night of the demons, maybe. I do it a big one to redeem myself. After losing that one last night, it still hurts, that does. Well, I reckon that's about it for filming this evening. Not an awful lot of light left. So, hopefully I'm going to see you all again, floodlit, or I will be, at some stage during the night with a great big fat carb. The Redeemer, we're going to call him. So, until that time, see you later. Well that was a little bit of an anticlimax. It wasn't night of the demons, it wasn't actually night of anything. I've been stood out there since half past four this morning, it's now about half past six. I've seen about three or four fish dotted about randomly. Had a few little tip pull down liner things, but no idea at what stage between the tips and the bait they were. And 
not exactly what I was expecting. It is very busy. I don't know whether the added activity has sort of knocked them off the feed a bit, but there's quite a few people turned up yesterday tea time. But it doesn't look like my redeemer's coming unless we get an out of the blue last minute bite. I think got a couple of hours left, I suppose, something like that. Going to shoot off about nine-ish. A bit of a strange one, really. The fish within about a minute of starting the session. A couple of moves later, hooked and lost a decent one, and then it's all just tailed off. Tricky little buggers. So what I really need is one of those um, calendar page turn sort of gif icon things that flicks forward through the days. Because we're not still here, we're here again. We stood in the same plot that we last spoke, but I was really hoping on the way down here. I knew they were moving. I think I told you last week there was a, well, in part one, just now probably, there was a fallen tree in the swim next door, my one I like in the winter. I knew they were going to take it out, but I wasn't sure when. So it's now Sunday, and I've got been got down here, whatever it is, mid-afternoon, one hour after they've opened the swim. How is your luck? It's just absolutely spot on. So we're over the other side of the rickety rackety bridge with the troll underneath. There's that trapping across my bridge. That's us. And that's us. Enter at your own risk. And here we are, a different little jetty. It's a little bit wider than the other one. Isn't it? And obviously, the other day we was just fishing there, but I did see a few fish here. And because it hasn't been fished for two weeks, and nor is the swim the other side of this bush, that means this section of water hasn't had any pounding of leads, any bait, nothing which on this lake is quite rare. So, I'm fairly confident that I've, well, I'm confident I've got a bloody good swim. It's the exact one I'd have wanted. Couldn't believe it when there was no one in here. Got to get gear all around here, get it set up, and drag in loads of big fat mirrors and commons. Still after that redeemer out there somewhere. All right, let's get doing. So just to make you feel better, for anyone that thinks, why does that always happen to me? Never see it happen on the videos or on the blogs. This is my barrow landing. This here was my downfall. Just that one little route. This is my barrow landing. I've managed to drag the barrow off of it. <laughs> but I think that's fairly well stacked, don't you? In the bushes. <laughs> Thing is, I managed to save it once here. It was half on its side. I levelled it up and then it went over on its nose. Handles flew up in the air and it took my teeth out and all my kits down there. But we're there anyway. We're close enough, because the swim's only there. Could have been worse. <sighs> right, let's drag it all out of the bushes, try and make us something out of it. Try and make it look a little bit more professional <laughs> than that. <coughs> Being Dave Lane, I sometimes wonder. So, we're in. Really not. <laughs> if you're one of these people that's fanatical about your bivy pegs, this wouldn't be the swim for you. 
I reckon the best I've done is about an inch with any of them. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, quite hard, the ground, let's just say. But the bivvy's up, there ain't no wind. Rods are out. And I was saying, so this one's been shut, and the one there's been shut. So I've gone for the, sort of, both to the right. There's no one's gone in next door. So this bit of the lake hasn't been fished for a good couple of weeks. Whereas sort of straight out from the swim, I was only next door, wasn't I? Just round here to the left um, a few days ago. Yeah, and that can be cast into. But this section can't. So let's see how clever they've been. Maybe they have been a few of them holed up here. If so, they're going to get a surprise. No such thing as a free meal. I've got a bit of a red ant problem as well. Loads of them crawling up and down this bit of wood and up this bit of the boards. I've been bitten about five times already. Now the weather forecast for this session, that's why I've put a brolly up, bivy up, I wouldn't usually bother at this time of year. But the forecast is for torrential rain. Just found a red ant on the back of my neck, look bugger. Um, it's for torrential rain tomorrow, next couple of days really. Which is why I've decided not to bring Madalena. She stayed at home this session, but Although she's not here, her DNA is here. <laughs> because when I unpacked my gear, I found a bag of dog poo. She had a poo on the way home as I was pushing the barra back to the... Well, I say home, uh, on the way back to the van as I was pushing my barra back last week. She squatted down and had a poo and I put it in a double bag there and knotted it and I've just unpacked my gear and found I brought it back to the lake with me. So, she may not be here, but uh, shit is. Little memento. Right then, while at home, I decided that um, I wanted to reduce the load of the barrow. That was quite a lot of bulky stuff on there. So I looked at everything on there and I thought, with well, a barbecue, I love that barbecue, that Ferraboli thing I brought, and I love my cob. But the cob's quite big for a barra, and the ferroboli's chunky, needs something. So I've got this. A man can't have too many barbecues, can he? They're all going to get used. I'm not giving up on any, but I just thought I wanted something flat and a little. It goes on the barrow underneath all my gear and takes up zero room. Now, I've seen loads of these. You've probably all seen these over the years. But look. It is totally flat, just sits on the barrow, pings open. I mean, yeah, it's not going to be the, the bit of kit that the, um, the other two are, but if it's only me eating, that's it. It's got to be the one, hasn't it? <laughs> and it folds up flat like a laptop. Well, we'll see. It'll either be amazing and totally on the firm, or it'll be a piece of shit and it'll never come out again. It's got two choices. It's got to shape up first time. I've also um, stopped bringing a big bag of coal around with me because I thought, yeah, you don't need that. Stop bringing them bags that you like because they're quite big, aren't they? Two of them is a sack of coal, sack of coal, and a sack of briquettes is about four barbecues. Well, that's only two, so I'll put a lot of thought into this. I 
nice little bucket which fits perfectly in with everything else on the barrel probably do might stretch the three barbecues and always go back and top it up out the motor that's the thing we all carry everything don't we every time you go you leave the motor you put everything on your barrel for two or three days why car park's only there isn't it so i've started taking one day's kit and then going they bait and everything then going back and topping up for the next day it's all quite obvious isn't it but we just don't do it we have to load up absolutely everything break your balls get into the swim tip it all over in the bushes <laughs> I don't have to pick it all up again. And as you know, I do like a move. And I just think I want to get it all as light as possible. <clears throat> when I'm in the boat over the road there, it don't matter. It don't matter at all because it's all in the boat. And all I've got to do is go twist my wrist and we're away. But when you've actually got to push it, or <clears throat> sort of push it, walk behind it with the electric barrow, um, and stop it falling over on the hills and cambers. I just think less is, is more, isn't it? It's, it just makes you more mobile. I think back to the days when I was on Horton over the road, you know, like that's 30 years ago. I had a little plastic box stolen from Halfords, it said on the side, and I had it on a twin wheel, wheel trolley, like the old grannies have for going up the shops, um, and a couple of rods and an umbrella. And that was me. I used to put the bed chair at the back of this little granny barra, the plastic box there, and that was all I ever needed. And if I wanted beer, I'd go to the off license or a bossy shop and buy beer. If I needed more food, I'd well, generally ponce it off somebody else. I didn't have a lot of stuff then, to be honest. But I caught a lot of fish and I moved a lot. So, It's not gallons of this going on, it's only coming out in little drips. Just trying to soak that up. Not as much as you might think. So there we go, we're going to try out the new Barbie. Right, let's fire her up. This is the easy bit. <coughs> this bit can't fail to work, can it really? Well, I suppose it could, but... Fuel and fire generally tends to have the desired effect. A little bit of that, a little bit more of that just to let it know what's going on. We have a barbecue. And what we've got tonight, although it's a bit of a cheat, Things have changed because I've moved. I've moved next door to a co-op. I live, I reckon I have to walk 50 yards to the co-op from my house. But if I made a hole in the hedge, I'd probably have to walk about 25 yards. It's our next door neighbour. So I can't remember the last time I went to Tesco's or Sainsbury's. I just go to co-op. Co-op sells some good gear. They really do. If, um, those burgers that we had before, they're co-op. If you don't buy the rubbish stuff, if you buy the slightly better stuff, they do some good stuff. And they do these half chickens. They do a Caribbean style one, which I don't like the sound of really, sounds a bit fruity. Uh, but they do a Mexican one, which I've had loads of times on the bank. It's half a chicken in a silver foil tray um, with like a Mexican spices on it. You just take the plastic off, put a bit of silver foil over the top to turn it into a bit of an oven. Cook it for 30, 40 minutes and take it out plop it on the grill or brown it off and it's job done and it's bloody lovely. The only thing I don't like about this is it's not adjustable. So it's proper down on the heat. But I've got a little plan for that. It does mean you have to drink two cans of speckled in. But if you can manage that. Oh, Four cans would be better, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's definitely a four can trick, not a two can trick. Oh, here we go, hold on. Now we might be getting somewhere. 
right by the time you next <coughs> see this barbecue I would have come up with some sort of a better plan because it needs some sort of spaces oh, it's smoking me out that is Is that going to fall over? <laughs> ta -ra! Hey? Sometimes I amaze myself. I didn't give it long on them things. I decided ground level was better. It wasn't quite as savage as I thought it was, so... We're all good. Don't think I can sit here and watch it for 40 minutes, though, and I'm sure you can't. Let's kind of have a look at the pond, shall we? Thought we might have seen a couple by now, it's about... I've no idea what time is, maybe seven? Oh, a little beep on the right hand rod. Trying out some new alarms today. So, um, a t t x s a t t s s um, the heads don't make a sound it's for a sounder box and it keeps making me wonder what it is when i get a single i've had a couple of liners um, it comes from a different direction which throws me to start with nice little heads Nice and secretive as well, because your, your heads don't make a noise, no one knows you've got a bite. You want to be a bit sneaky. Of course, a big old plane coming in. how she's doing we've had a bit of a disaster when the barra went over I'll say the tip my knife and fork somehow flew out the side pocket I just found my knife in the bushes but my fork is absolutely nowhere to be seen look at him he's looking good isn't he This isn't so good. <coughs> they did forecast it. But I was hoping I might get to the end of my barbecue <laughs> before it started pissing down. We're now barbecuing in the pissing rain. The camera's covered up. The chicken ain't. <coughs> hmm. Now what to do? Bring it indoors. I would say it's a very bad idea to barbecue <coughs> indoors because of the fumes, but <coughs> we may have no option. <coughs> My fork has disappeared off the planet. I've looked everywhere in the bushes for it. It doesn't exist anymore. Um, yeah, I think the barbie's going to have to come in. Here. Right, there we go. <coughs> Yeah, not advisable, I must say, never, ever, ever, ever do this with any form of a front on the bivvy because the fumes that coals give off are nasty. But I ain't got a lot of options. <laughs> it's not getting any lighter, is it? It's actually getting quite serious now. Well, it's like serious, there's only water in it, but we're a couple of inches deep at the front. Fairly deep down there inside the bivvy. Oh, there's a GoPro, look at that laid under there. In an absolute lake. That's not good, is it? Because it's waterproof. Yeah, that changed quick, didn't it?
it wrong to put your GoPro on the barbecue to dry it out? Yeah, it probably is, isn't it? Underwater barbecuing with Laney. Right, I'll go eat my chicken. I'll see you lot later. I'll tell you what, I've just had a thought halfway through this chicken. I am so glad I didn't bring Madalena. Because still wouldn't have put a ground sheet down. Her bed would have been floating by now. And I'd have been sharing this with her all night and she would have been drenched. Absolutely sobbing. As it is, she's probably laid on my sofa, <coughs> watching my TV, happy as Larry. to say there's absolutely nothing to report I had a rubbish night's sleep just kept waking up all the time but I didn't hear anything at any stage of that operation probably awake up one two three just kept waking up but it's just been raining Drismal and no, I haven't seen a single fish in this big central section of the lake, which is pretty much unheard of at this time of year. I've seen a load down over by the bridge in the helipad, but that's shut because a couple of the frisky little males are still having a thrash about down there. But there's other fish showing, but the rest of the lake looks pretty damn dead. I ain't very good at this, just sitting in a bivy waiting for the fish to turn up, Lark. I don't know what it is you're supposed to do. I'm bored. I'm in a good swim. I should just do two nights and think they're going to turn up tonight. But <clears throat> when you've done one night without anything, why should the second night be any different? It's the definition of madness, isn't it? keep repeating the same thing and hoping for a different result but at some stage obviously they will eat the bait I've put out there but will I still be here that's the question I think I'm gonna to have to go for a walk round well oh my god I had me walk round I've so nearly moved and then one fish showed right out on me long spot so I thought, oh no, sod it, I'm going to stay. So I just cast out, put half a dozen more spods over there, <laughs> and the Redeemer has come. After losing a decent common, I've got a proper chunk of a common here. We'll find out how good these alarms are, because that one's been on the bottom of the lake. This one's nearly on the bottom of the lake, where both the stage stands have ripped out, but that was underwater for about 10 minutes. The fish just beat me up, went from right out there, round into the bay. I had to drag him all the way around the margins. It is just absolute chaos. But he's in the net, and he's a bloody good one. Proper chunky monkey. Right. Before we lift him out, let's get everything ready, shall we? Let's move you lot round to where the stuff's going to go on. <coughs> the Redeemer, he's come at last. He's come to visit us. Forceps at the ready. Cut the line so that we'd have to carry the rod. Oh, this is a proper one, this is. We ain't going to be disappointed with this fella. Jesus. Damn it. Oh, he's a big common. BFC. Big fat common. He's as fat as a girt pig, as they say in the West Country. Uh. 
quite, I think he might be a 40 pounder, this one. Steady, Eddie. No. 35, 36, 37, 38 pounds. 38 pounds. <laughs> Boy, wow. Wow, bloody wow. At last, a big one. Oh, we like this a lot. Oh, yes. Oh, he's a fucking beauty. You are a fucking beauty. Well done. Thank you so much for visiting. No idea how happy that makes me. Mid afternoon, out the blue. The Redeemer. Bless him. Oh. If he dies. Oh, they're out there suddenly, aren't they? <laughs> Middle of the afternoon, two bites and two chucks. This had been out there moments. The thing is, it took me five casts to hit the exact spot I was happy with, so I pounded it and it still went off straight away. What a difference a day makes, eh? 24 little hours. The sun in the showers. Let me serenade in you. Don't know any of the words, obviously. I like this daytime action lock. That's well all right, isn't it? What have we got this time? Angry, that's what we got. Mr. Angry. There's another common, but it's not quite as big as the last one. Faster though. They are turbocharged in here at the moment, these carp. Ever decrease in circles. Gulp of air. And he's on his way to the net. We got him. Nice. Nice black common. Speak. Unbelievably. 
I've got a bloody third one. I just literally cannot get a second rod in the water. I was just wrapping up the second rod to the distance. And my close spot, where I baited yesterday, <laughs> they're rolling non-stop on it and fizzing like mad, but they only look like small ones there. But this is mental. Three, in three chucks in absolutely just no time in the middle of the day. All that bait. Whew, I'm so hot. I'll take my sweatshirt off if I, if I had a minute. <laughs> Quite literally, it is like that. <clears throat> I think I so nearly moved. I mean like really nearly moved. Took a bucket round there, sat on the bucket, proper deliberated it. One fish showed, changed my mind. Bosh, bosh, bosh. My guess is this one's a mirror. I don't care what anyone says, they do fight differently. And if I'm wrong and it's a common, I can always just edit that bit out. <laughs> Beauty of doing your own editing. And not doing anything live. Oh, it's all right, calm down. It's like an episode of Wicked Tuna. I haven't seen him yet, he's proper deep. Top of the leader. Come, come on. They're coming, they're coming. Oh, come on. Come on, mate. Don't mind a laugh and a joke, but fuck a pen at mine. Come on, fish, I could have cast out and caught another one by now. Just coming up tail first every time. He does not want to give up. There he is. He ain't that big. Feels like a bloody monster. I don't know why I'm picking up the net handle. I know you're not done yet. Jesus. This is ridiculous. Still fighting. Oh, he ain't a bad one. <laughs> Carp City. Bloody hell, I need a fag. Nailed on the mugger, three out of three. On the size six muggers with the little brony beads. That ain't bad, is it? That's a good little test. Three fights like that. No disasters. Happy days. Had to be a time when they decided they wanted to eat food. 
25 pound. 25. And a very lively, lively carp. He's a lovely one, this is. But yeah, I think he's gonna be slightly problematic. You wouldn't think after all of that out there that he could, would you? There we go, 25 pound, gorgeous black mirror. Not the black mirror, a black mirror. Let's have a look at his other side. Same, just as bloody lovely. How do these boys do it at somewhere like, oh, I don't know, linear in that, where they get 20 fish or 30 fish? That's just stupid, isn't it? I've had three and I'm completely exhausted and everything's in a complete bomb site. I don't know what's going on. I've still only got one rod in the water. They must be a lot more organised than Laney. That's all I can say. Right, number three. Well, number two, but third. Oh, battery's running out on my stills camera, so I ain't gonna bother weighing this one. If you give me 20 pounds, I'll take it. If you don't, whatever. <laughs> I'll take 19, I don't care. Get a quick snap of him. Maybe, possibly, possibly not. There we go. We're nearly in that camera, aren't we? I don't know. <laughs> I'm over here. There we go. Oh, hat trick of carps. Hey, eh? Who'd have bloody thought it? Right, get him back. Get the other rod out there. Bait up, most important. Get some bait out there, because I can assure you there ain't nothing left. So I have absolutely no idea what was going on or what happened with the filming of this fourth fish. Um, I don't seem to have any video of it. I got a tiny bit of me striking it on GoPro and then the GoPro ran out of battery. Uh, but I have got some still photos which you're looking at now. But yeah, four fish all in, God, what, an hour, an hour and a half? It was just manic. I think I need lessons off Tom Maker. <laughs> a tutorial not in carp fishing but in how he doesn't end up like this after four fish it's just a complete bomb site and shit everywhere all the tackle out and things and just a wreckage I don't know what the chair's doing up <laughs> just where it landed the GoPro's out of battery this one, I don't know what he's doing. What are you up to, Mr. Camera? You're off. All right, okay, at least you're not wasting battery. That's on, so that's wasting loads of battery. Which means I've probably got one in my pocket somewhere. It's also on and wasting loads of battery. Right. How about you? I reckon it's got to be barbecue time, isn't it? Maybe a can of cider. It's all a bit hectic, but I might have to bring a lucky bag of Maddie's poo with me more often. <laughs> Good old poo, well done. Yeah, what a turnaround, eh? From being absolutely... Why is that finger there? What's that got to do with anything? Um, yeah, from being absolutely no clue can't figure out what the bloody hell was going wrong and then what was going wrong is the fish weren't feeding because when they fed 
where I was, bingo. Away they go. Bang, 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 bang. They're getting there, aren't they? <clears throat> There's a knack to these, um, not sausages, obviously. Anyone anyway, can cook a sausage, probably better than I have done. Forgot all about them. But there's a knack to these ribs. Pork belly ribs need to be mullered. If they're not mullered, they're really fatty. You need to turn the fat from being like spongy fat into crunchy like that. They're actually not very palatable if they're just tan, you know, light brown. They need to be properly cooked through and destroyed. Then they're yum. One just poked his head out, sort of straight out. I'm fishing sort of right-ish. Well, no ish about it. I'm fishing right and that one was straight out. Talking about where I'm fishing, have you noticed that I never show you exactly where I'm casting anymore? <laughs> There's a good reason for that. It was a lesson hard learned. Back on the, I don't know how long you've been following this stuff, but back on what used to call the big pit, so before the islands, the other boating lake, uh, I did vlogs on there regularly. And I did show you where I was fishing and where I was casting. And every week following a vlog coming out, there'd be somebody, often the same person, a choice of one, two or three of them, would be sat exactly where I'd vlogged, fishing exactly where I was fishing. They scrutinised it in far too much detail. So since then, that's the reason you don't see me cast into a certain tree or marker or whatever. Laney learnt a little lesson there. And if you do see me cast into a tree or a marker, it's probably a false one. <laughs> I used to do that on Black Swan a lot. I used to go out there in the boat and put canes out and fish somewhere completely different. Big canes, really obvious canes, and fish nowhere near them. No point in getting older if you don't get wiser. Right, you know what I said about mullering them? <laughs> well, I got <coughs> sidetracked. I was actually over there, next to the rods, talking to you lot about something completely different on a different camera. And I forgot what I was doing. Look at that one. That is, when I say mullered, I don't usually mean quite that mullered. That is burnt to a crisp. Incinerated, I think that one is. Yeah, this was not going to go down to my <laughs> crowning glory. I'm not sure about this barbecue. I don't like the, the single level thing. Just don't seem to be cutting the mustard like the other one. Yeah, it don't take a lot of carting about. But of the three, of the Ferraboli, the cob and this, this one's definitely bottom of the pile. But anyway, our uh, burnt offerings are nearly done. I don't know why the ribs, uh, the uh, pork belly slices are doing so well and the sausages seem to be made of asbestos. We're moving somewhere cooler, shall we? Right. Might be that time. He's done. He's not really sure what he is, but we're going to eat him anyway. The asbestos sausages are getting there. Turning around. Oh, he's done to perfection, that one. We use that one to cover up that one. This is a right fatty one, this one. Porker. Oh, oh shit! Two beeps over there. 
it's all a bit manic. We've got a great big plate of, well, charcoal basically. <laughs> Not my finest hour, but I'm sure it will taste lovely. Right, I'm gonna actually do something that I never do. I'm gonna tie a rig. <laughs> well, I do tie rigs. Obviously, we all tie rigs. I'm gonna pre-tie a rig. I'm just thinking if I've had four bites in the day, in a rubbish bite time, there's a good chance of a fish tonight. Um, so I'm gonna pre-tie a spare rig. As I said earlier, I'm not like these, you know, your Tom Makers and people like that, who I totally admire for their tenacity of it all, how they can prepare and prepare and prepare. I can't. I can put myself on fish, hopefully I can catch fish, but I can't be ready for the next fish. That's just not me, but I am an retiree. Because I don't want to do it in the dark. I'd love to show you, but I self-filming of tying rigs on the bank is almost impossible. I'll tell you what I'll do, I, did, I actually did something the other day um, <coughs> on me Inner Circle channel, this sort of pay-as-you-go YouTube channel, about this particular rig. So I'll put a link in the description. So if you do, if you have got any interest in what rigs I use, I get asked it a lot, but you know, not everybody wants to know. Uh, in the description there'll be a link, you can click that and that will take you there. So you've got the choice there. I'm not ramming it down your throat. You can either look or not look as you choose. But they are so simple, these little tungs. I love tungsten stuff, I really do. I think it's so good. These little, little tungsten bead that just turns a size 6 mugger into a running rig type thing in about five seconds for that. I'm going to pack it here, there we go, right in front of me. Yeah, I was prepared, I just didn't know it. And that's it, the job done. Pop your little ring or bait screw or whatever you want on there. Ta-ra! See, that's what I wanted the tire rig. So I knew it would take me about five seconds. I can go back to stuff I'm more used to, like rolling a fag. <laughs> that's me, I'm ready, I'm prepared. All I've got to do is tie that to a bit of the old book link. Job done. Right, that's me, that's me technical over with. Hope you enjoyed it. feel all educated now. I do. I surprise myself sometimes, quite often. But yeah, there will be a link there if you do want to have a closer up look, because that was rubbish, wasn't it? But, rubbish or not, I now have a spare rig. Ah. Now what we're going to do. Talking of links, there'll be loads of linky things. I like putting links, so it's doing everything over and over again. So I've, while well, I've got your attention, I've also got a few, not many books left on my special offer of the Obsession with Carp, which started here over the road, where well, it started, but a lot of it was focused behind me on Horton. I've got not many, about 100 left, I think, there on special offer. And, uh, Fine Line's also on an offer. Um, there'll be a link there to my book sales, a link to watching a rig if you want to watch a rig, a link to my Patreon, a link to anything else I can think of linking really. Ah, that's the links done, that's the advert done anyway. Now we need to catch that carb, don't we? See now is bite time, now is the perfect time, now is the evening, there have been a few evening bites. And yet only when bites in the middle of the day, which is a rubbish bite time, I thought it had been going off now especially as I haven't got a camera trained on it at the moment. I've had a camera on there, well, every second of the day apart from when I've had a bite, it does seem. 
Let's turn the camera around. You don't want to rip me. You want to watch this rip off, don't you? I know you do. I know that's what you want, what you really, really want. dark yet it's about that dark god it's all so bloody professional isn't it <laughs> somebody said to me the other day i like your stuff laney because it's raw i don't know quite how to take that I said it's like real and raw you mean shit <laughs> you mean badly filmed <laughs> and i always turn the dial the wrong way that's what he meant but I'll take raw. <coughs> yep, raw is good. Well, of all the things I was expecting last night, a full night's sleep wasn't actually one of them. Unpredictable, isn't it, fishing? I went to bed fully expecting to get woken up by one of them. <clears throat> but no, not a beep. I had a good kit though. So there we have it. 48 hours with about an hour of madness. Just sort of stuck in the middle, really. But bloody enjoyable. I've got a few hours left this morning, so who knows? They might revisit. I just noticed matey over the far side there lifted a very full wet net out of the water so maybe they've drifted up the lake a little bit oh well time to drink tea oh just in one right in my swim Well, that's the lot. Barrel's loaded, ready to go. Last few bits. I've waited and I've waited for another one of them manic feeding spells. It's not happening, is it? But I have absolutely no complaints. I have four fish, one of them's a corker. Well, little corkers, but one of them's a big corker. This little moorhen here has been entertaining the whole time. Um, can we get closer to him? Not in focus, no. He lives in this reed bed and he's a tiny little fella. Moorhens are really, really timid. He will not let a single coot or anything get anywhere near his little domain. He's been chasing them off across the lake. They're three times the size of him. But he don't care. Little duck syndrome. Anyway, that's all folks. See you later. Ta-da.